60 A lot of you are furious with me. Uh, who's this, John? I can't believe Nick Ferrari talking about McDonald's recruiting over 50s. Um, I, I don't think you should have those views. Uh, Mo says, I wouldn't want to be served by you, you miserable old git. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> I would be shocking. Just terrible. What do you want? And as you change your mind, I thought you just said you wanted filio fish. Would, would you want to go large or not? Well, it's not that hard, is it? Either you want more fries or you don't want more fries. How hard is this? And then it'd be off to see the manager who'd be, you know, the age of my grandchildren. I think it's probably best if you go elsewhere. <laughs> Burger King come in. Anyway, look, it's sort of just having a bit of fun. You wouldn't want me serving your hamburgers, let me assure you. Uh, right, John in Sherbourne, let's talk energy. Uh, the Labour Party got it solved, haven't they? Thank God. Good morning. <laughs> the left have a penchant for heroic oversimplification. I'll say no. For, I'll make my points quickly because I know you don't have a lot of time. Of One, Why am I dying? to do what Keir Starmer wants, you've got to get elected. Indeed. So there's got to be a general election. The last time anybody on the Conservative side made that kind of mistake was Ted Heath. His arrogance made him believe that he was better than the unions and I'll take it to the country. We got Labour and Dennis Healy, Chancellor at the time, had to go to the IMF to borrow money. Oh, that's right. right? Yes, that's right. So, A, he's not in power. B, the current brand of Conservatives are not as stupid or as arrogant as Heath. And if he thinks they're going to hand him a general election... You know, as soon as one of them gets into the leadership, he's living in a fool's paradise. And my last point is the assumption, which is rather naive, if we were in Venezuela or Russia or China, perhaps you could say, you know, right, OK, boys, we're going to backdate it six months and you'll pay up, go away. They're not going to roll over for this. And I go back to my conversation with you last week. What they have, they'll hold on to. They've got the best lawyers, the best organisation, and we'd be tied up in the courts. and <laughs> We'd have a whole winter, and the only people who are going to make money out of this are the oh, barristers. Lord. Are the lawyers and the barristers, my learned friends. John, thank you for that. Good hearing from you again. We'll talk soon. More on this to come. Let's go to other matters. And as we talked a little about what you'll hear from Labour, I did say that Liz Truss, the front-runner to be the next Conservative leader, and therefore, of course, the Prime Minister, floated in the papers yesterday that she could strip the planned £400 energy bill discount from high earners. Simon Clark, one of her key backers, Chief Secretary to the Treasury, effectively number two in command at the, uh, at the Chancellor, at the Treasury to the Chancellor of the Exchequer, agreeing it was odd wealthy people would benefit from the handout. Here with more details is another prominent Liz Trust supporter, uh, former chairman of the Conservative Party and Northern Ireland Secretary, uh, Brandon Lewis, who joins me now. How will it be determined whether or not you get your 400 quid? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Well, look, with the, there's no decisions on this yet. Simon Clark as the Chief Secretary and the Chancellor and Nadine Zahawi are looking at a range of measures uh, around what we can do to help people with the uh, the challenges that people are facing with energy bills and the cost of living more generally, and they'll be put to the new Prime Minister in early September. And as Liz has said, there'll be an emergency budget that will bring forward proposals to help people. When will the emergency budget be, Mr Lewis? Well, I know Liz is determined to do that as quickly as possible. Obviously, if uh, she is Prime Minister, we'll know the result of the uh, leadership election on the 5th of September. So I know she'll be looking to do that within a matter of weeks of becoming Prime Minister if she's in that fortunate position. So she's saying that some people might not get their £400, but she doesn't know exactly who. Well, no, what Simon Clark has outlined at the weekend is one of the things that uh, he as Chief Secretary and the team at the Treasury are looking at. Uh, I think it is right, and people would expect the Treasury to be looking at a range of things, and uh, Liz's team looking at a range of things we can do to make sure we're putting support into people. Obviously, the core point that Liz wants to do, uh, develop, should she be Prime Minister, is uh, a, a lower tax economy more generally, so people have more money in their pockets to deal with some of these challenges, whilst obviously building our energy security to bring these prices down as well. Yes, but I, I will come back to this, because this is what the Telegraph were running yesterday. I'm sure you saw it. Some people won't get their £400, it is suggested. So you have they have no idea of the means of the test. They're just another idea they're throwing out there and they're not quite sure how it works. Is that fair to say? Uh, not quite, no. As oh. I say, the Treasurer and Simon Clark and the Chancellor... So what, what is the salary level? No, £50,000 no, per annum? No, no, as I say, you're, you're tempting me into prejudging proposals that might come forward in a, in a budget. And uh, as you know, I'm not going to be uh, tempted into that. So this is just that, a as, promise as, to try and win votes, isn't it? It's not been thought through whatsoever. No, it's, part, it's like no, saying it's everyone not, will get a slice of apple. The day after Liz Truss is Prime Minister, it's free apple pie day. Everybody gets a free apple pie. 
You might as well actually, say that. Go, Where does I, it end? Actually, Nick, what, what you've got <clears throat> is the Chief Secretary of the Treasury, uh, as part, and, and one of Liz's supporters, yes, as is the Chancellor and Dean Sahawi, and Liz trusts herself, of outlining for people uh, you know, that they want to make sure we are delivering a package of things. It is quite logical that they will be looking at a whole range of things. Liz has already outlined the underlying principles will be a low tax economy with growth to ensure yes. people have more money in their pocket. She wants to deal with the green levies in the short term. Yes. This is something that is affordable within the headwind we've got. To go beyond that, obviously, does need an emergency budget, and that's the work that's going on at the moment. Uh, you... And should we be in a position where, as I say, Liz is the Prime Minister, she and her then Chancellor will propose that to the country in an emergency budget so that I'll people have that knowledge and, and confirmation before the energy price cap comes through. Mr. Lewis, you've served at cabinet level, you've been chairman of the Conservative Party, but when it comes to this energy plan or energy crisis, you lot of Manchester United and the Labour Party of Brentford, aren't they? You are taking such a well, kicking. None of you got an idea to bless yourselves with. Keir Starmer comes and solves the problem overnight. He also dreamt well, of windfall quite. taxes no, let's, and everything else. What exactly hold does on the Conservatives let's, let's, do here? Well, well, hold on. Let's also be clear about what we've seen from Keir Starmer today. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unfunded proposal. No, it's not. Un more they say well, it's not on. unfunded. If, no, I know they say it's not, but if you look at what the IFS have already said this morning, there's a, there's a big hold of about £7 billion potentially in what they're proposing. There's also the fact that this will cost potentially over a year what they're proposing more than furlough. Look, Actually, what we're looking to do, and I think it is right, Liz's team are taking the time, the Treasury, the Chancellor and the Chief Secretary, to work through what they can do within a range of measures that will be proposed in an emergency budget. So we do this properly, make sure it's properly costed, and make sure it actually works, so that what we're proposing puts money in people's but, pockets, allows them to deal with these challenges, and potentially brings down the cost of energy as well. But, Mr Lewis, Sir Keir Starmer and Labour suggested a windfall tax. The government finally adopted it. The Labour Party suggested taking VAT off energy bills. Rishi Sunak now wants to do this. They are in the lead. Every time Conservatives follow up behind, don't they? Well, there's actually quite a big difference, I would say, between the, the groups you've mentioned and where Liz Trust is, which is that Liz has outlined and been consistent from the beginning that we need to reduce tax. Everybody else is playing catch up with Liz on that. She's led the way on it. She's also been very clear that she wants to do this based on a low tax economy, being absolutely firm that we will wait until we have the Prime Minister and Chancellor in place who can do the work based on what the Treasury we're looking at at the moment and the work that Liz's team are looking at in an emergency budget. We've been consistent on this all the way through. I think that's the right, proper and professional way to do it. So we come with proposals that are properly costed that actually can work for people and make a difference to people's lives so they can afford to deal with these issues and the challenges that we're all seeing from the global increase in not just inflation but energy prices more generally. Last couple of stories, just get a word on you if I can. You'll be aware of the pressure now we understand later this week with A-level results. I'm afraid I don't know the age of your children. If you have any of that age group, I wish them well, but it will be unfortunately appear to be widespread disappointment and a scramble for university places the like of which you haven't seen for decades what's gone wrong here or what might lie behind this in your view, Mr Lewis? Uh, well, I've got, no, my, my two, one is, uh, both mine are sort of through the A-level oh, stage, so, uh, but but I do therefore, you must have had them very in the last Mr. couple Lewis, of years, so, <laughs> you're too kind, yeah. the, um, but but obviously, I, it's only in the last couple of years, so I, I fully understand that uh, the free song that people will be having all this week, children yeah. across the country and parents worried about what's going to happen with their results, looking forward to them, hopefully excited about them. Look, the reality is this has been a very difficult few years for students doing A-levels and university students. As I say, I've seen that through my children, what they've had to deal with going through COVID and um, not benefiting from the type of experience that most of us were, were fortunately able to have before COVID. So it is a challenging time. Uh, we'll have to see what the results are later this week. Obviously, I wish everybody uh, the best of luck with those results and that they're able to get into university or the job of their choice when it, they move forward. It is being predicted that last year, this may have affected you, there were 45% uh, A stars or A's. This year, 34%. There's going to be a lot of disappointed, can I even say in some instances, heartbroken young people. Well, if the prediction plays through, yes, there'll be some very, very disappointed people out there. Obviously, we, we, we all need to wait and see what the actual results right. are. And, as, you know, one of the things I've seen over the last couple of years is students who are through really difficult times, you know, to, and, and the teachers, actually, the work they've done and their parents to support them, pull out some phenomenal results, bearing in mind the, the, the change they've seen through COVID. So let's wait and see where we are with the results and, and hope everybody gets the, the outcomes that they've, they've worked so hard for. OK, uh, finally, has the Prime Minister thrown in the towel? Has he actually stopped working? I note he's on another holiday, this time in Greece, the second holiday in two weeks. Why doesn't he just give it up? 
Well, uh, first of all, obviously, he has uh, indicated that he's going to be stepping down. We've got a new prime minister coming uh, into place on the probably the sixth of September. But look, Nick, you know as well as I do that uh, as politicians, are particularly in a role like prime minister, and having been a secretary of state, I've seen this. Let alone as prime minister, even when you are not in the office in Downing Street, you are working. Uh, the, with one of the things with uh, the way we all work, Virgin now, but it's always been the case of prime minister. Spine eggs look, is working, but anyway, do go on. Well, look, I, look, to be fair, anybody has to pop out, and one of these we've all seen, even here in London, yes, Boris, as prime minister's gone out and done. His own shopping from time to time. Mr Lewis, this is his second holiday in two weeks. Why don't we do it the other way and just celebrate when he is at work and spends the rest of his well, holiday? I, I, hold on, I think it's all look from memory, and I'm talking off the top of my head, so somebody may prove me slightly wrong on this, but I think it's probably his only his, uh, he's probably in about his second uh, second week holiday in the last year or so, certainly this year. So, uh, look, while somebody is away, whether they're Secretary of State or let alone the Prime Minister, they will be continuing to work. I can assure you, he will still be going through red boxes. He will still right. be dealing with national security issues where relevant. Being out of the country does not mean the Prime Minister stops working. Grateful for your time as ever, Brandon Lewis. Thank you, former Northern Ireland Secretary. Chairman of the Conservative Party, appearing here on LBC Where at 8 o'clock. Bang on, actually. Uh, it's news. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. LBC.